Hey, Kevin, how are you? Okay, no, here it is. Hello. Hello. Uh, we will wait for a little bit <clears throat> for other guys to join us. But Kevin, I saw your um, extraction and it looks really good. Yeah. And I like, I, I think it's scalable for, for all diseases, right? Um. It's applicable. I would say scalable. I still am working on how to like make them go faster because it takes like maybe less than an hour to do one one pickle, which is the reason why I'm like I'm trying to like scale it. I'm trying to figure out how to do like multi-processing or and multi-threading on the Python notebook with this. But and like people are saying like like uh, LTK is not the greatest for that. And I I I less less I spend the whole time just trying to get from like it being two hours to run time to be an hour per run time. So I'm trying to get it slower just enough because I don't want it to take 20 hours to run a full entire data set. Um, so that's like like, like current like progress, but overall it, it, it looks nice. Uh, like, and it pulls what we need. Uh, it pull, pulls, pulls everything. It's very, it's very thorough. Uh, which is like a good part is that as in doing so, it's taken a long to run. <laughs> Have you seen the data set that is fully pickled? Uh, I, so, so I'm good. So one thing I'm wondering is that, so the that fully pickled data set, um, uh, I know that like brands pickled data set is like 20 different, like 20, like, I don't know how many gigabytes were. It's a it's a large amount of files. It's like I guess are we, is the one that you guys have is it a condensed version of brands twenty pickled files or is it like like yeah. Anyway, please remind me. I will share with you uh, yeah. the data set and uh, let's go through the quick update on what on what do we have so far. So. Uh, Kevin gave us uh, keywords on heart diseases that seems to be pretty complete and pretty full list. That's oh. that's a, that's a good start. Yeah. Uh, good start. Yeah. Uh, pretty gave us uh, papers on uh, population uh, density. These papers are now uh, in check because probably population size is not relevant term, but this is not uh, final. Uh, because we need to read the articles themselves to understand like maybe it, it actually captures the context, it requires more of a manual uh, checking. Uh, Pranjalia uh, gave us uh, a set of papers uh, discussing pollution and viral diseases. This set has been recently uh, checked, like really uh, uh, the, 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 the person uh, went and like took every article and read it through to confirm the relevancy. I will shortly look into result from the preliminary check that was an extremely uh, precise set. Uh, and we don't really have for all papers result sections and it seems that labeling is not perfect and that's the reason why we don't capture all the papers so probably with from these data sets that you've submitted like Kriti and Pranjalia we will uh, extract the best papers 
and try to use the similarity method to extract the, the rest of the papers that look very, very similar to the best papers you've got to extract. Does that make sense? Yes, basically we have to build a recommendation system so we can enter the most relevant papers yeah. and recommend yeah. papers according to that. Yeah, that sounds good to me too. But even like- uh, the, I just- uh, I Yeah, sure, go. Oh yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. I, I can go after you, I don't mind. Uh, just, yeah. Uh, oh, let's- uh, no. You're disappearing, Gritty, once again, please. Okay. So, uh, Ansun helped us uh, to kind of summarize what's going on, and he made an amazing visual representation. It doesn't include everything at this moment, but Ansun, if you can send it, for example, to chat to show what an amazing kind mm -hmm. of diagram we have at the moment, it would mm -hmm. be lovely. Okay, yeah, will do. Perfect. Uh, and uh, it was uh, Yasan's idea today that even if, for example, uh, using our method, we extract only kind of very limited set of papers, but extremely relevant papers, then we probably can scale it with Brendan's help using some kind of uh, similarities. We should uh, check that with Brandon because Lucas and Brandon, they do work on uh, something of this nature. And basically overall uh, advancement at the moment is pretty good. We are still waiting for uh, Michael Wong uh, to, uh, uh, to submit a notebook with the heart diseases and we are still waiting for the list of uh, uh, keywords that limit heart diseases only to risk factors, like pre-existing state of diseases. Uh, and as soon as we have that, I think we need a like kind of to make a little push tomorrow, but at the same time, it is probably time to start uh, collecting the final notebook because it pretty much looks like we will have high quality results to submit. And uh, in that sense, that would be lovely if we take our time and think on how do we uh, describe the methodology? Because it wasn't something very kind of, you know, simple. It was first some sort of common sense and semantic work it was then search for in grams. It was then another semantic tuning, and then it will be a similarity search. So if you have an idea on how to put all that in a logical structure, I'll be happy to kind of, you know, uh, listen uh, to your opinion. Because you fi finally, you worked with that. So you're familiar with, with the methodology. How do you think we should put it? How do you think we should describe it? I can start working with a, with an outline and uh, maybe we can fill in the, the details on the algorithms that we will uh, end up uh, using. But uh, I don't have much experience with uh, Kaggle submissions. So someone who is uh, more comfortable with uh, that uh, should uh, take a look and uh, refine the output. I've been reading a few solid Kaggle uh, submissions that look really good and they have the following things in common. First of all, it's great description of a background. Why did we, re why did we uh, decided to go for these specific risk factors? Uh, 
briefly uh, what was the method and briefly this overall situation that pushed us to do all of that. Then good submission uh, contains detailed ex uh, explanation and description of all data sets used. We used Brandon's data set. We should uh, explain what happened, what, what has been done to that data set. Probably Brandon will have ready piece on that. We used citations uh, data set, which also should be kind of uh, described. We used MD inputs, and we will probably have to uh, uh, insert that as, uh, as well. And we need to cite papers that confirm uh, inputs that we've got. Then it will be kind of something scientifically looking and potentially reliable. If you have any other ideas, any other ideas, because obviously it's not the full list, uh, I'm very open to suggestions. Yeah, actually I have a, a suggestion. When I was creating um, a kind of flow chart of what everyone is kind of doing, um, I started splitting up risk factors into like categories, for example, like, you know, age related, uh, climate related, diseases related, and demographical related. So I think um, definitely having um, some kind of outline on there regarding like scope, what kind of categories we have with risk factors, just to make it a little more organized, maybe have like sub points like that would be definitely great to follow with rather than just dumping a bunch of risk factors in some random order. That's correct. We have, we have actually a very uh, big list of risk factors already uh, split into different categories. And that's one of the things that should be discussed uh, probably in background with citations, why proving why this categorization is relevant at all. Mm -hmm. I, have, uh, I have this list. Uh... Anson in a, in, an ex, in a spreadsheet, in a table uh, format, categorized and uh, grouped. The one okay. I sent to, to Michael as well. So maybe I will send you to, to have a look. Of, okay. uh, also, I have populated uh, the, the Ngram dictionary just for age with some uh, indicative values. It's not the final set. Just to mm -hmm. get an idea of how the this auxiliary database, if we may say the database, uh, might work. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I will send you a link uh, to, to see it, okay? Okay, and also just another request for everyone. Um, if everyone could kind of like send a description of not only what exactly they're doing, um, as far as like all the notebooks and code, but also what data sets specifically that you're using because I think one of the problems that we might be having is like inconsistencies and in like what data sets we're using, which pickles we're using. So I think it'd be very good to like organize ourselves on that so that our Kaggle submission, it'll be clear what kind of data sets we're using. That's a very good point. You're actually correct. I, I think everything will have to be run on the same data set at the final notebook. We cannot have a multiple versions of the same data just uh, be because we use them at this stage we will have to harmonize as a step yeah definitely and we have but to it's make not, sure that oh sorry go ahead it's not necessarily possible because uh, there are advantages and disadvantages for a various data sets at, at the end of the day it's basically kind of the same data but uh, it might be that, for example, in, Brand in Brandon's data set, there are certain sections that are problematic. And then it's okay to use another data set. And it's okay to kind of each time uh, explain uh, what happened. Actually, we also have to include uh, disadvantages of the methodologies that we've implemented. And this will be one of the uh, points that we have to mention. Um, I just have a clarification. So uh, when we do submit for the Kaggle submission, will our results be filtered by papers that specifically look at coronavirus? 
as in not like the current strain, but like all like papers which specifically mention coronavirus in it or its related strains? Or are we just looking across all across the literature? Yeah, because there are like similar things like flu-like symptoms or like pneumonia or, or things similar to coronavirus, but not exactly. Not exactly. So yeah, yeah. for instance, uh, in some of the papers that I have right now, uh, okay, so the papers that I have right now for population density, so if I look across the whole data set, that's about 205 papers. And even if I remove population, if I, when I remove population size, I'm left with some, I think, 50 papers or so, which is still decent. But within that, if I look only for papers that also mention coronavirus, I'm left with six papers. But then those six papers are super relevant. Like they're right on the mark for the for what we're looking for in terms of population density. I just wanted to find out if we're sort of looking at a subset of coronavirus related papers or just across the literature. Uh, we are doing the following, like in a general uh, guidelines, it's noted that we want to separate papers into uh, corona uh, related and non-corona so that a researcher uh, can make a choice of uh, his own what he wants to look at uh, okay that makes sense oh and yeah. also and also when you're searching for um coronavirus um it's helpful not just to search for um covid or uh, covid19 but also searching for keywords such as SARS and MERS. Um, those are the older, some of the older coronaviruses um, that are uh, that affect humans. So if uh, you search for that, maybe you'll get more papers. Oh yeah, so absolutely. I, I did use those related strains, uh, but for instance, for population density as such, a lot of papers aren't looking within the coronavirus literature. So I use, there's a list of about 19 related terms that I've filtered, uh, 19 coronavirus related forms that I filtered the data. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe it's possible that this is just a problem for population density. But I guess in but, the main uh, code, we need sorry, to add yes. this section that we filter, that we also have, like in the main code, we need to have a section where we're also filtering, uh, we're also creating a different subset that filters for coronavirus, because that's not there in all the code. In, no, in what I've seen now. It's, Even a, if it's a column very... in, the, in the final output we have this as a column, the, whether the paper discusses uh, COVID-19 or not. Oh, really? That's correct. Oh, I, oh, I did not find that in the code. Okay, uh, if someone, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll look into this later on then. Yeah. Uh, I, I can send you, I will send you the, the full spec for the, for the output so that you have uh, Maybe you you got an outdated one because yeah, right, yeah, that would be happened. Uh, please share it with Chrissy and please uh, please share it with Pranjalia. Oh, also I hope yeah. I'm not behind. Uh, also, I hope I'm not behind the loop here. But um, just making sure is anyone has anyone done like splitting um, papers uh, based on if it was like an animal related study versus if it was a human related study. Okay, I so that's not there relevant yet. because I saw. Yeah, but but it would be easy because okay, relatively easy because in the um, so uh, in the pickle file that Brandon created in the taxonomy section, you can see where uh, so there are different taxonomies for humans and animals. So maybe we could filter by that also. It would be easy, I suppose. All you'll have to do is drop the or like yeah. It would be easy because that's already been done by Brandon, the categorization. Okay. It comes to it. But it's not done yet, I think, unless someone else did it. No, it's not done yet. Yeah. Yeah. But it's okay. exactly the, the second step. It's to, uh, it's uh, uh, coronavirus, non-coronavirus, uh, if possible and if relevant due to the number of papers, a research method, Type of study, uh, type of study normally includes human or non-human. Um, yeah, so basically, this there are, should be some classifications that helps. But I can tell that even, for example, we have very small set of uh, papers discussing exactly what we need. Okay, let's say it's six papers, but it's really six papers, and we didn't miss anything. That's a pretty good set to actually get a. Uh, some part of a summary from experts 
that will will make it even more useful. Definitely. Yeah, but the only problem with six papers is that, yes, yeah, six papers is kind of a decent size. But the thing is, if you want something to be super, super credible, you got to have a lot more than six sources kind of um, crediting it's each not, other and verifying each other, maybe. Yeah, but it's not uh, about uh, when you do a scientific paper, okay? Then mm -hmm. the minimum, minimum number of sources that you need to mention is supposed to be 20. Okay. These are, this has to be like the highest relevancy papers and some that mention something and then you refer to it. When we return an output, yes, we basically the questions are very vague. So the question is, what do we know about heart disease or what do we know about pollution? Mm -hmm. Well, these are six papers that exactly describing what we know and this is summary made by, by an expert that summarizes what we know, because mm -hmm. that's what we have in a data set. Indeed, uh, it's not exactly a scientific research. It's more like an NLP task, right? It's more like artificial intelligence helping to analyze a huge set of, uh, of uh, uh, data. Mm -hmm. No, we, so we're definitely, you... we're definitely prioritizing uh, getting a few specific papers rather than like many super general papers that may not be applicable, right? French Alia? Ah, okay. Uh, oh, so I yeah? have just one more question. Uh, so the, um, so if anyone here has looked at the UM Letters column in the pickle file, so I was, I was seeing that it has a lot of nice keywords if i want like in the medical context for instance uh, like a, a, it had keywords for a few models that i was looking for uh, would you guys think it's a good idea to look through that to create a dictionary for say the models uh, that have been used for analysis in the uh, papers that we have because when trying to classify the methodology one problem that i have personally is that i'm I'm not from the medical field. I only know like statistical models of analysis, but sometimes they use super specific models in their uh, papers and I have no way of catching them unless I have a comprehensive dictionary. Uh, this is something that uh, an expert should decide on looking through the results. <laughs> if without an expert input, nobody here is capable I think, of uh, doing relevant job. The problem I found with two journals was there were very less uh, rows or papers which contained those the journals. Okay. So, I see. So maybe we can search to them uh, the uh, few of the papers which have definite journals. We can uh, surely utilize them for uh, better classification. Right. No, but but you're saying the main issue I'll face is that it's not very well populated. So maybe uh, yes. of all methods. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the, yeah, because that's the issue I'm having with the methodology as of now. I'm not able to get the methodology of each paper down. Like I'm getting a lot of missing values, and that's because oh. I don't have medical. I, I like it's essentially because I don't know all the medical models that could be used mm -hmm. for analysis of disease. Uh, Maya, can we get someone uh, from the medical field? Can you ask uh, Arta or someone? I have yeah. a very, I have a very good guy who is Alenik MD and he made all the prelim, prelim, preliminary segmentations that oh, basically we are following now. So what I will do, I will just kind of uh, try to um, call him in a chat and uh, uh, organize so that he he will be capable of working together with you guys. Okay. okay. Uh, any questions beside that so far? It seems not. And yeah, then, okay. So uh, then my question, uh, according to your kind of intuition, 
when do we have something we can really show how much time do we need like your fair estimation and silence okay so uh I think okay so from my end I can't send anything to this but uh, I just I have to make just a few more ad adjustments to the code that Pranjalia had made so I'll be able to send my stuff by tomorrow evening uh, and and that, so that'll include like all the classification for corona not corona animal not animal uh, and methodology as far as I have done it so I can say by tomorrow evening also uh, that IST that's Indian Standard Time evening tomorrow. So I don't know what that translates everywhere. Else. That means that after tomorrow, I can start working on the final submission and uh, writing like relevant paper, uh, relevant part of papers together with you based on the data you're providing. That sounds amazing. That's good. I yeah. think we are good. So, uh, yeah, so I think and once we have the uh, no, final sort of notebook up, and I, so, so yeah, the, the code that Pranj I was using that Pranjali wrote was very uh, easy to apply across different uh, subsets of data. So I think we'll be able to uh, get all the results once the code is sort of in place. It doesn't take long to run at all, so. It's amazing, it's amazing, and, uh, guys. Just, I don't know about the rest, so yeah. Yeah, I can I can help checking outputs of anybody's code if um, that would be really helpful. Uh, that would be absolutely lovely, and I will uh, now send you Vija, uh, uh, who is not on the call. Unfortunately, he mm -hmm. went uh, through the pollution papers, and he was actually reading them, and he expressed his opinion. Let's okay. double check this opinion. And then when we, have, when we are confident that we are having said that we can forward to, to an expert, let's, let's take an expert and make him uh, do an observation or, on what do we do further. Because like uh, medical experts are kind of rare thing to acquire here. And so you mm -hmm. want to come really, really ready not to waste their time, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So let's jump into the general call. Guys, amazing job. Amazing. It's just wow. Thank you so much. Good day, right? Yeah. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. 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 Okay.